this lens almost hasn't left the mount of any of my cameras, the Nikon Z5, Z6 II, and mostly the Z9, in the last 30-something days, and the results are in. I believe I have shot more than enough images with the Nikkor Z 85mm f1.2s to work out what I really think of this Canon barrel. I'm not going to get all technical on the specs because who cares? Me! Sorry, for me photography isn't all mechanics. It's the joy of the shoot, the money you can make, what you're doing, and or the end of the day results. Unless you're a collector, in which case I have some stuff to sell you. But I will talk some technical designs as it relates to any obvious advantages in any of the talking points. And those points are construction, usability, image quality, and price. Construction! Who doesn't love an all metal lens? Oh no, this thing isn't all metal. I was just asking in a general sense. The construction materials are the typical modern lens fanfare, mostly hard plastic on the areas where the lens would probably make contact with something uh, that could break it, and metal on the back and of course the lens mount as well. I'm not thrilled, but I've accepted that this is the way that the industry is doing it now. The weight of the lens, however, would have you thinking that it's better made than it probably is. Not saying it's poorly made, it's just it feels better because it's heavy. There hasn't been any really terrible weather since I got it, so I have no idea how it will handle the extremes, but it's literally identically made to just about every Nikon Z lens, so I'm actually not worried about weather. I'll keep it out of a downpour, but confidently take it into a drizzle. That's generally how I operate. Diving in a little bit deeper into the weight aspect, uh, overall, to me, it feels pretty great in the hand solo, to me. Although I know a lot of people still think mirrorless equals light and portable. The best experience in feel and weight dispersion that this lens has is on the Z9, of course, because it's chunky and it's mounted on a chunky camera. But on the other cameras like the Z5 and the Z6 II, while noticeably more front heavy, somehow it's not a ridiculous setup aside from looking lopsided. I've shot this lens extensively on all of my cameras and I didn't have any hand, wrist, or arm fatigue, surprisingly. Overall, the Nikon 85 f1.2 is as well made as any other Nikon Z lens, but not more so. And it fits amazingly on the Z9 and better than expected on the smaller camera bodies. Let's talk more about the dimensions. I don't put much weight into these topics because all I want is the best image quality I can get and I will trade off almost any convenience for that. But if I put myself in the shoes of the average consumer, it's reasonable in length and it's super girthy. As far as bagability goes, it fits in my cases and bags fine. I find camera width easier to maneuver in bags than length, so I would say that even though it's fat, I like the storage ability of this lens over the 50mm f1.2. Let's talk some usability and functionality. So Z Wade, what's the usability of this lens like? Well, it, it's got the standards, uh, focus and aperture rings. Uh, I turn the aperture ring off because I find it annoying. You know, it's got the manual and autofocus switch. It's, it's clicky, the buttons, are, they're fine. Everything is fine. This is like every single other Nikon Z mount lens. The community is divided on the lack of the top screen. I found some use for it on zoom lenses. I do not care on the primes. If they had never existed, I'd be fine with it. But I can understand how some people kind of like that. It's kind of cool and techy looking. Really, I have no opinion on it, just meh. The focus speed is not meh. It's actually kind of wild. 85 millimeter lenses generally aren't fast at all. And that is definitely the case with the Z 85 millimeter F 1.8s. This mother effer though <laughs> is real quick and real accurate, but it does have some noise. I don't care about that. I'm a little split on the focusing distance. I had hoped that this lens would have a closer focusing distance due to my love of shallow depth of field photography that was realized whenever I bought the 50 millimeter F 1.2 S. With the 85 millimeter F 1.2, I didn't get that with the focusing distance, just a little bit less than double the distance of the 50 millimeter. The 50 is 1.5 feet and this is 2.8. I got spoiled by the Z lens trend of kind of stupidly close focus, but honestly, the perspective of the 50 millimeter at 1.5 feet and the 85 at 2.8 feet isn't that bad. 85 is not double the focal length of the 50 with a little less than double the focusing distance. I bet you didn't care about that fact. It's worth mentioning that I kind of think the 85 millimeter focus distance might not be a result of the lens's design. I can't read Nikon's mind, 
But that focus distance as it relates to the lens output is so perfect that it is kind of as if Nikon designed it to restrict you to the minimum distance of perfection. A chest up portrait at minimum focus distance seems like exactly what you want every single time. It makes the lens kind of incredibly easy to use. What I mean is a portrait from about chest to head that minimum focus distance just gives you the perfect amount of the face in focus with the perfect amount of roll off. It's almost like it's, it's, it's kind of hard to screw up a portrait. So what about image quality? At the end of the day, this is what matters to me. Please take this literally. This is technically not Nikon's sharpest lens, but it's very damned sharp. I have decided that this lens is sharper than many other YouTubers are making it sound as if they are trying to invent a balance of pros and cons, or they just didn't use it long enough because the focus distance we discussed earlier is something that you do need to get used to if you're used to shooting Nikon Z lenses. I have noted that this lens has its own character that doesn't even have to be searched for. It looks different, which brings some fun back into playing with lenses. To me, the most noticeable characteristic, and not being a lens crafting expert, I think it might be due to the 11 aperture blades, is the very smooth transition to the out of focus areas. It makes the isolation of the subjects so beautiful and clean. Another characteristic that is super obvious is the bokeh. It basically looks like a very low element count lens. I'm talking borderline Meyer Optic Gerlitz Trail Plan bokeh. This lens has a ton of contrast and it has micro contrast for days, meaning black and white images are amazing. A con of this lens, there is more fringing than I was expecting, but it's not really that surprising at f1.2. Also, it's easily fixed or avoided. How? Don't heavily backlight your subject and you can use flash to expose for the background so your subject isn't captured with insanely bright backgrounds. Also, you can just fix it in post. But you know, for three grand, I was kind of expecting a little bit more control. Speaking of which, that brings us to price. This is the hardest category I've ever judged. Not just since I started YouTube, but in my entire photography journey. If anyone tells you they know for sure how or why this lens does or does not make sense with a 2800 USD pre-tax price tag, or if they're trying to play expert at all on this, they have either not shot this lens at all, haven't shot it enough, have too much or too little money, or too much or too little clout. Confusing, I know, it, just like this lens. The fact is, this lens at its launch price is very hard to nail down after extended use. There are some things that I totally expected to be better, some things that exceeded my expectations, and some premium things I was totally expecting that it shares in common with the 50mm f1.2. I kind of agree with a lot of people when I say I think a couple of hundred dollars less would have been a little more appropriate on paper. For sure, it would have been a little more accessible to consumers who would have eventually discovered what I'm about to tell you, and that is, even at $3,000 after tax, if you have used the Nikkor Z85 f1.2s, regardless of the few negative surprises I mentioned, it is a real struggle to say it's not worth every cent. I want to say it's slightly high, and it is, but is it? See, I'm debating on my teleprompter as I'm scripting this out, apparently, even for more money. Like, let's pretend this was, oh, 3,200 bucks after tax, and you had the gift of hindsight. After extended use with this gift of hindsight, it would still be extremely difficult to say that it's not worth every cent. There is something built in influencing the results of the 8512 that borderlines witchcraft. Not just the secret sauce that we see in the 512 and a few other Z-mount lenses, it's something a little more. My pixel peeping eyes haven't found out what that sorcery is in the first month and roughly 1500 unique portraits. And I've never been so unconfident that I will ever decode a lens mystery because quite frankly, this lens is kind of doing its own thing in one unknown regard. But one thing is for sure, it really kicks ass.